Maori, uh, the Maori um, uh, prayer book and the Rawari, which was being used widely right. um, throughout um, Maori Dim. So, uh, and the cover, just to give you a little bit of a background, that cover is a panel. It's a ceramic panel that is at the Mount of Olives or Padanosta mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Wow. Oh, wow. And so uh, a friend of mine and myself went over to Jerusalem in 2000 for a celebration. Uh, and it's called the Feast of the Tabernacles. And, um, and we went to Paternoster, or the Mount of Olives, for the very first time. And, of course, there were something like 35 panels, ceramic panels mm. there in every language. Mm. Uh, in, uh, sorry, in many languages. And uh, we mm. noted that there were panels there from uh, Fiji, and there were panels there from the Cook Islands, and, <laughs> uh, and there was no panel there from Aotearoa, New Zealand. There were, there were panels from England, uh, so the English was there, but not necessarily attributed to New Zealand or Aotearoa. Um, so we went about um, fundraising and campaigning to have the ceramic tile erected. And um, that's what is on the cover of this book. So they decided to do a reprint of the book and remodeling slightly of the book while Archbishop Hui Verko was still alive. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, just a little bit of history on that. Yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, what would be great if we could get that um, as a PDF or something that we can access online. Yes, getting their thinking now. Because <laughs> it's a resource if it's not being printed. Um, yeah. You know? So anyway, we'll, we'll just make a note of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know that it is available on PDF necessarily. Yeah. But no. it must be, but, but you know, I mean, we've had well, the old style. Years. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've had many, many years since Fakahui Hui Verko. Yeah, and um, but it's a great resource, and uh, we use yeah. it quite a lot. And there are karaki here and there that are not in the prayer book. Yeah. Um, yes, that's uh, why I thought. Um, yeah, maybe we need to um, speak to this book as well. Maybe we'll take it around on Saturday's session at. Um, Okay, and of course, as, as Megan was saying, there's a, uh, a book that's been uh, published by Te Manawa Te Whike, um, down in Rotorua based, and they're uh, called Kete Inui, and um, uh, that's available to buy. So um, I've uh, you know, I'm going to buy some and, and yeah, yeah, we're going to buy some and then we'll probably give you ladies some. Yeah, we'll, we'll it's uh, it's diglot, so that's even yeah. better. So, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's got the Māori on the left, and I haven't seen it yet. Um, I know it was uh, in um, what do you call it? It was running in parallel with with a, with an app that was supposed oh. to be. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, but the app didn't quite take off quite as well. They did get it up and running, but then all of a sudden it came down off the, oh. off the website. So, um, but they're working on it. Right. Well, I, I've seen the book and held the book for a minute. <laughs> and then I had to give it back <laughs> after taking a photo of it. Um, yes. But it looked quite good. Yes. And it was set out very nice and clearly. Um, and I was impressed. <laughs> yes. Oh, how lovely. So, um, Jackie and Heather, I'll just take you for a little walk, uh, just because I am here. Uh, I'm here for a reason. Uh, I'm facilitating a big kaupapa around the Anglican Indigenous Network, uh, and it's our voices are speaking into um, environmental racism. Mm -hmm. uh, and we join the voices of the Arctic, Africa, and mm -hmm. the Amazon. Uh, so we're here at Holy Sepulchre uh, mm -hmm. doing all the recording, which is what mm -hmm. you could hear uh, mm -hmm. them singing. So they were singing um, Sir Kingi Ihaka's uh, Poi oh, yeah. on page 154 yeah. of the Midday Canticle. Mm -hmm. That's what they were singing. So they've now gone into the church. 
uh, and they'll continue their recording in there. But it's just, I have to say, uh, I've been with them since seven o'clock this morning and they're just doing an excellent job mm. um, of doing this recording. It will be available eventually and we'll share that. Uh, and um, it'll be going live on the Anglican Communion Environmental Network on the 2nd of November. Oh, good. Oh, okay. So I'll keep you posted, but I just want to walk you around if you haven't been to... Are you in um, the hall, Jacinthia? Pardon? Are you in the hall of the church? Yes, I am. I was going to say, I'm not sure if you've been here before. Uh, but, yes, when um, I was young, it was the best really? dances. Really? So yeah. when it was still in the hands of Tikanga Pākehā? Hi. Oh, yes. That's where you went for dances. Yes. And, of course, the diocese handed it over in 1972 to Māori uh, for mission. And these are the illustrious leaders up here behind me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, is, I see Megan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, I'm going to get to Cynthia. <laughs> he was the, he's the missioner there, Pingi yeah. Ihaka. Yeah. The first mm -hmm. missioner of Holy mm -hmm. Sepulchre in 1972. And so, and these are all the people who have been the priests in charge. Uh, I might add, because it's only ladies here at the moment, that it's a whole lineup of men. <laughs> <laughs> Māori men. Uh, even though I was priest in charge here for a little while, uh, apparently I didn't warrant my photo on the wall, but there you go. <laughs> So, um, you know, these are tuku tuku panels. Beautiful. And that, that sort of star in the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I might turn away from the, I might take myself out of the shot. Is this all right, Megan? Can I, can I do this? Walk you around Holy Sepulchre? Yeah. Okay. Yes. If, if we mute ourselves, then we won't keep cutting in the picture. Okay. Does that sound good? Yep. Oh no, if I do that, then I can't see whether or not you can see the tuku tuku panels. But the star in the middle of this panel here is the insignia on Bishop Kittel's ring, his Episcopal ring. And you'll see the hearts all come out from the centre. And that's an indication of the people, Ngā Hoe Fa. If you've heard the expression Ngā Hoe Fa, from the four winds from the four winds, which is a beautiful piece of tuku tuku. And it's on his, um, you know, on his, what do you call the, the, the shield looking mitre thing that we have in all our churches? Anyway, it's on all his. Kaihapa, the Eucharist. Some of these have been done while I've been here too, while I've been around. So, and there's, you know, quite a number of them. They've increased. Um, and if we get time later, I'll take you into the church. But if you get a chance to come into the church at some stage, please do. Because we've got 21 tuku tuku panels that were erected last year, end of last year. It's the Potama, Stairway to Heaven. Fame again, and that they they um, frame the these double doors that that they throw open when we're having a big hakari here, a big kai. We throw open those doors, and the partiki or stairway to heaven frames that. And of course, these are the partiki. Partiki is the flounder, the fish. They're lovely, aren't they? They're big. Yeah, just to give you an idea of how big they are. So, see, I can't get, I can't even get it in when, when I've got it on myself. It's how big they are. Mm. 
They're massive. And this one here that I'm showing you now is Nga Fetu. Nga Fetu, Fetu is stars. Stars, which we use in our Eucharistic prayer of the 476 Eucharistic liturgy. We talk about Nga Fetu, countless as heaven stars. And that's the Tuku Tuku panel that shows that. Beautiful. Beautiful. What else? Yes. And, of course, this is kind of the hall where many a beautiful meal has been prepared. And, um, you know, wonderful celebrations. Wonderful. And today is another celebration where we've got uh, Tikang Māori gathered here speaking into the Indigenous Network on environmental racism. And uh, I've been working with this group here and also we're doing a theological reflection on environmental racism and Emily Colgan, if you know her, She's heading that, that discussion, or well, actually, we've done the recording. We did that yesterday. Uh, and it's beautiful, really, really beautiful. I just love the way it's all come together. And uh, tonight we've got Pacifica, Tikanga Polynesia, and they'll be offering uh, himene or hymns, and then they'll finish with a big bang because it's a 45 minute presentation. Um, they'll finish with, if you're familiar with the song, Pacifica, which is a beautiful song. Uh, but in between, so there's Archbishop Winston Halapua and there's Faye Tebi from Polynesia. Uh, Archbishop Halapua will speak of the lament of the people and the lament of the earth, which he's, which he's a master in. And he spoke into the United Nations. Uh, and globally, he's a global voice on environmental. And Faye is, uh, he heads the group for General Synod on um, climate change resilience. And so he rolls out, and so he's got the voice of hope. Yeah, and I'm lucky because I'm, I'm the thread. <laughs> I'm the thread with all those groups, and I've been able to, you know, uh, not necessarily choreograph, but in, in some ways choreograph the whole Anglican Indigenous Network presentation. So we're the, we're the curtain opener for the Anglican Communion. So it's so, all going to be recorded and then we'll have access to it. Is that what correct. you're saying? Correct. Great. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, and they'll all be recorded. So there'll be the Arctic, you know, the Amazon and mm. Africa. And oh, so they, those indigenous places will also um, have, you know, they'll do whatever they do. Um, and then the, it's a culmination of all those voices. Uh, and we oh. all are speaking into environmental racism. Uh, what's interesting, and I guess, you know, maybe pertinent also for kind of the co-papa that, you know, where we talk about healing ministries, uh, ho order, you know, ho order. And I think, uh, you know, some of the things that we're talking about is how healing ministry is not just about human mm. healing. And some of the voices that we're hearing through this Anglican Indigenous Network talks about the healing of the earth yeah. and the healing of the created world and some of the... Uh, you know, scripture that we've been able to pull upon, and one of them I would have to say that 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 I endear to immensely is from Genesis two, where he breathed, where he breathed life, uh, and of course uh, our responsibility is kaitiaki stewards, um, and so you know when we talk about healing, well, you know we actually need to heal. 
the earth as well. And that's very much threaded through all this uh, presentation that we're doing for the Anglican Indigenous Net. And Shall so, we open with a bit of karakia then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Before oh, we have finish. You got one have you, have you, <laughs> yeah. No, I just thought you've just given us a wonderful journey inside the hall there, and I, I think we need to pull that together and then go into the healing. And I just thought you were, you know, just get you into it. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. Do you have one prepared, or do you want me to? No, do I didn't. No, no. Other than what's yeah. in the liturgy. Oh. Yes, and of course, I don't. Oh, do you want me to bring that um, healing liturgy up, or shall I just do one? You just do my... a prayer, and then I can bring it up here. Yeah, okay. 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 Me noi tate. Irongi uh, te matua te tama me te wai rua tapu amine e te atua. Hei mo koe yamato e hoa hei tohu tohu yamato mahi kato. Ko koe ano hoki hei whakakaha i a mātou. Kia whai kororia ai koe i a mātou mahi katoa. He mea tīmata, he mea mahi. He mea whakaoti i roto i a koe. Kia whiwhi ai hoki mātou ki te ora tonu. I te mea e atawhaitia nei e koe. Hui hu karaiti hoki tō mātou āreke. Āmine. Kia ora. And I think you'd be familiar with that uh, liturgy by now. Anyway, that's what we learned for the Māori language moment. Go before us, yeah. O oh Lord, in all our doings, in all our doings. And it's ho order, you know, ho order is wellness. Mm. Hey. Mm. So it's very, very important. And uh, oranga, anything that's got order in it, it means well. Pure, well. Be well. Mm. So, ho order is just a, a, a fuller, fuller, fuller word for wellness. And then you couple that with rangi mari, yeah. On peace. Peace, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so it's been quite an interesting journey, actually, with uh, Emily Colgan in terms of the theological healing that needs to happen uh, between human and other than human. Mm. Uh, a lovely expression, uh, human and other than human, rather than human and everything else. It's, uh, uh, it's an expression that she's used, and we've adopted it in our rhetoric, in our narrative for um, healing. And um, drawing upon, you know, all the uh, scripture, Psalm 96 is perhaps one of them. Um, that's an excellent uh, psalm about the earth, you know, that the mountains will cry and the rivers will weep and the, um, wow. Mm. About healing. So, yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Mm. And so we've got that liturgy. But um, uh, it's made me think about, uh, you know, this process of uh, environmental racism, as it were, in, in, in terms of Indigenous voice, or even the voice of Aotearoa New Zealand, about we actually do need, because we've got that uh, 456, haven't we, which is a Eucharistic liturgy mm. on creation and redemption, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we... You know, I just think that we need to develop something a little bit more around the lament of Earth itself, which we'll hear from Winston Halapua, um, and and what might be an appropriate karakia that actually speaks to um, the healing of the Earth, mm. the healing of other than human. If I could, you know, that's an yeah. expression we've adopted of other, and then in turn we'll heal because it's a reciprocity of um, custodianship, really. So we're kaitiaki and we're stewards, but if, you know, it'll look after us. Other than human, will look after us if we look <laughs> after it. So, I mean, wonderful, wonderful theology on healing. Mm. Mm. So I just wanted to share that with you, because here you are in Holy Sepulchre, right yeah. in the monk's all. Oh, fabulous. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, you've got to take those opportunities while they're there. You know, um, we just, it's great. It's good. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? I mean, I got my finger in a lot of pies, ladies. Yes. Uh, and and this is one of them. I was seconded to to to, you know, choreograph if you like. Uh, I don't quite know the word, but bring everyone together. You know, would you like to do this? It's like, oh yeah, heck yeah. And you know, they've just there's some gifted, blessed people, and. Yeah. Um, this is this is what the the end game is. This is what we're lamenting about. Uh, we we're talking about the healing and uh, healing also for Maori and the indigenous, mm. where we haven't been allowed to practice a lot of um, well, perhaps they're strong words, but we've been restricted in our usual practices, and and one of them might be. Um, um, Rahui. Rahui is a really big word for us and we, we, we don't allow um, fishing or harvesting in a particular time of the calendar, of the lunar calendar. Uh, and we would like all humans to abide by that, but, but we're not allowed to apply. So because you have quotas, you have, you know, legislation, policies and things like that. And so we lament about uh, how, is, how is that going to heal so that we can next year um, take from that same source and there's an abundance because there isn't an abundance anymore. So it speaks into that, uh, that healing of the earth and the rivers in a way that will sustain us in a in that reciprocal way that they heal, that those other than human entities also um, heal us as well. You've heard me talk about Modi. Mm. Modi, yes. the life essence, and nothing is dead. Everything lives. And so, um, you know, when if we're, if we're damaging the environment, then we're damaging ourselves. And so what are the appropriate ways as a church as a hahi, do we um, ask for forgiveness and, and, you know, redemption? And then what is the real action, the, 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 the physical action that we will take? How will we speak into that social injustice, into that environmental injustice, into that cultural injustice around healing? And it's very, very loud and very, very uh, on the table at the moment in Māori circles and Māori leadership. Māori leadership. Mm. Yeah. And so you'll, you'll notice that Marama Davidson, if you're you know, here in Auckland, she's a candidate here for the Green Party in Tamaki Makoto. Um, and, yep, she's screaming mm. loud and clear that it's time for us to be a little bit more responsible, take that kaitiaki tanga a little bit more seriously, and what does that look like? Policies need to change, and we know that, mm. for wellness and that reciprocity. Wellness of other than human means wellness of human. Because I have to say, other than human can live fine without us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, that's true. <laughs> it's true. We don't say it enough. We don't say that enough. They'll survive fine yep. without us. Yep. <laughs> but can't be said the other way around. So we can't survive without other than human. So that's an interesting aspect, isn't it? Interesting thing. Mm. Mm. Do, uh, do you want to ask me anything about, you know, the sort of environmental racism and wellness of, of what's going down at the moment? Well, just in our local area at Russell, we've got a Rahui, mm. which is from um, Kaiara Ara, Mill Island, at the end of Russell Beach, goes round the corner of the Kauti Bay, Uruti, Oronga. And it's from 1st of September to 31st of December. It's the spawning season. Um, and that's Kororara Kamarai Society. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, 
we've got an annual magazine that comes out that I'm involved with and I've got an article coming into the magazine explaining the purpose of Rahui for the wider community, although most people understand. Yes. But for visitors too. So that's our poster. Wow, look at that. Mm. Oh, wow. So that's, um, they're looking now at the middle ground out between Pai here and Russell, that whole middle ground as maybe another project. There's more work to go on there. Yes. But they're seasonal, Rahui, yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. And of course, you know, the quota thing, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a wider wellness that needs to be looked at. And one of them is quota. You know, that people go out and, and dredge and, you know, do all sorts of things that actually are detriment to, to the Rahui principles. Mm. Um, even if they might be, you know, 50 kilometres to 100 kilometres out. Uh, there, it, it does affect the ecology of, of our waterways. And, mm. uh, and therefore, you know, certainly in the Hokianga, um, you know, I have to say my wellness has been affected because I can no longer go out and get a particular shellfish. Mm. They've got up and run away. Mm. And, and, and because I love them so much, they're so delicious. That's why my wellness is actually affected. <laughs> it's actually my taste buds and my puku, my stomach. But, um, you know, if, if, if we'd have been a little bit more savvy around quota in the Hokianga, they, we'd still have that particular shellfish. They're gone. And they've been gone for a long time. And there was the risk of that also with uh, Tohero oh, yes. up at Naki Ma Beach uh, that was on the brink of, I won't say extinction, but run away. You know, the shellfish do run away. And, um, and it was on the brink of that if they hadn't have bought in that seasonal rahui, which is policy driven by mm. councils, mm. which is great. So, uh, yeah, that whole order of all created things. It's, it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful, wonderful, it's symbiotic. Mm. You know, one is dependent on the other. And so that's been quite a lovely journey, certainly talking about that with uh, Emily Colgan and there's a number of us in that group that have explored the Māori principles of Māori, mana, whanaunga tanga, Kaitiaki Tanga and all those principles of Māoridom, mm. but are, are actually principles of all, really. We just have a word for it. Mm. And, um, and unpacking that in its holistic form and, 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 and pointing to the reciprocity, you know, that symbiotic relationship that we have mm. with other than human uh, created creation. Um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful um, discussion. And so the script that was put together and recorded yesterday, which, you'll, which eventually you'll hear, um, I think it will be a great resource also uh, for all of us because it does speak into wellness of all. Cool, eh? That's really cool. I, I, I just think there's something in the water. You know, and, and it's time, I think, you know, certainly Aotearoa are taking it to another level, to another, taking another step in their responsibility for wellness and kaitiakitanga. Yeah, I, I heard in, in the first lockdown we had, um, I think it was Sarah Park called it a rahui as well. You know, it was because in a way it was looking after ourselves. Yes. You know, and, and that was a good word to describe it, she thought. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I think um, uh, where, we, where we have the, where we have the uh, uh, well, you know, challenge really is, you know, there are four well-beings. There's the um, environmental well-being. There's the social well-being. There's the cultural well-being. And there's the economic well-being. Now, sadly, and you'll hear this quite a lot during the campaign, certainly coming from a particular party. I better not because this is getting recorded. 
that it is coming from a particular party around economy. Economy, 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 driven, driven, driven. And and certainly I understand that, you know, this certain economy does need to, to continue, but not at the cost of the other three well-beings. And if we continue to let economy um, rule the way we heal, the way other people are trying to heal other than human life, um, you know, it's, 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 just too hard a battle and and there comes a time i think when people think well what's the point mm. uh, but we've got to keep you know we just got to keep hammering at it you know the plastics around food and there's no need to have plastics around food we're getting better at it but it's all those sort of things you know mm. but there shouldn't be economy well-being which seems to be really highly driven over all the others mm. And so Rahui is around, you know, uh, social environment and um, cultural. Mm. And by cultural, I don't mean Māori. By cultural, I mean uh, human, mm. human culture. Um, uh, Rahui, uh, Rahui, you know, runs in parallel or, or uh, enhances the well-being and the healing of the other three. Of those three, not this Rahui definitely doesn't help economy, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> when they say you can't Never. go out there and take yeah. that stuff and sell it at the markets, mm. you can't do that now. So something is is um, is affected by it. Um, but if you allow economy to drive it, then you've got three other well beings that will suffer. Mm. It's that imbalance if you like. Mm. Yeah, we don't seem to teach enough about that, isn't it? It's the four, it's like a house, isn't it? Like a furry, you know, and you have those four areas and it keeps one balanced. And Yeah, um, yeah and there's, although I'm not a, I, I'm not a scholar on this by any means, but, you know, you've got um, um, te whare tapawha, for instance, which is possibly an expression you've heard before, te whare tapawha. And it's, uh, it was a Mason jury, jury um, uh, concept of, of how to keep wellness in our whare. Whare meaning everything. Yeah. Tao, your own whare, your family, all those concepts of, of places where you are mm. as, a, as a person in society, as a person in your family. Te uh, whare tapawha is about how do we keep all those four, you know, tapafires in some ways around four principles. Um, but I'm not a scholar on it, so I won't, I won't delve into it too much. But it is about the wellness of the whare. Yeah. And the whare for many of us is actually the earth. And we feel that we're not well if our earth is suffering. So... You know, tricky, eh? It's a sort of, well, not tricky, but it's, um, it's uh, people will just roll their eyes. Some people just, their eyes glaze over and they think, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. It was pie in the sky stuff. But, you know, I can't have my shellfish anymore in Hokianga. That's how real it is. Not pie yeah. in the sky. Mm. I can't have that shellfish anymore. It's gone. And so my wellness, my spiritual wellness, my cultural wellness, um, my social wellness, because we used to gather them to take them to the marae yeah. for a kai. And they feed a lot of people because they're little periwinkles. I don't, <laughs> um, they're called karahu, but they're little oh. periwinkles. Uh -huh. And they have a soft eye, soft brown eye on them. And you pick the eye out with a needle and then you line them all up on your needle. So, you, you know, you always go out and get a big needle. <laughs> you get the needle that shows um, sex and stuff like that. And then you can line up 10, 10 of these periwinkle karahu, they're called, um, on your needle. But they were prolific and they lived in mud flats. Oh. But the dredging... Uh, around the shorelines yeah. have, has affected them and they've run away. They haven't died. As far as I know, they're not extinct. If you go to some places, uh, they're still there. 
but you'll probably sink up to your chest in mud trying to get them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if we, uh, I'm just thinking about, uh, would you mind bringing that liturgy up, please, Megan? Where am I? Here we go. This one. Oh, no, no, not that one. This one. I don't need sound. Okay, this. This one. Right, you can see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jackie and Heather, are you familiar with this liturgy at all? Uh, no, no, it's, it's one that I've worked with with the units I've been with. Um, okay. So it's sort of more one that's been used in the south um, than anything. Um, <laughs> so, so it's different from the prayer book, although it may have bits from the prayer book in it. Um, it's quite lovely. It is. It's quite lovely. And, um, uh, you know, I've only, I've only just put in a couple of little things, really, but one of them is about... Um, you know, that no my hide my that welcoming of of Christ in yeah. our midst. And if you just quickly go to the next page, page please. Um yeah, and of course you might already know this Hemini. Oh, how's that go? I don't think You don't know this one? I, I, I was trying I to look for your um for your hymn book electronic which you sent me. I do have it. It's probably on my other Oh um, right. We can but find it. Anyway, another. um this one is, um, <clears throat> it became more popular after the Anglican Missions Conference that was held at King's College in 2015. Oh, okay. Did I go? Uh, because the tune was put to it by uh, Pane Kafia, if you're familiar with Reverend Pane Kafia. Yep. Yep. I know who and I forget who the other gentleman was, but there was the two of them actually put together. Uh, to my knowledge, the music for this particular uh, hymne, and then they taught it to us. And there were, we were a thousand strong, twelve hundred strong at the conference. They taught it to us there. It has since gone viral, right? And everybody sings it now, and you'll see it on YouTube. But it goes, uh, I love it, you know, Holy Spirit, welcome. You are welcome here. Guide us, Holy Spirit, speak to us again. It goes like this. <clears throat> Why do a tapu kuhumai No my ki why do a tapu arahia kore ro mai ano? Holy Spirit, welcome. You are welcome here. Guide us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us again. Why do a tapu kuhumai no maiki konei? Why do a tapu arahia kore ro mai ano? Have you heard it before? I have. I have. Yes. yes. Um, to come back to you now that I've sung it. <laughs> yes, it's, yes, it's beautiful. Uh, it is a song that I've sung at hospital bedsides. 
Uh, it is a song that I've sung when I've um, buried biblical chords in afterbirths, which we do in Māoridom, or we call it pitto. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's, it, it is a sort of a healing, and it's, a, it's showing the reciprocity, if you like. It's particularly hard if the child passed away. And I have done that. I have buried the pitol of a child that lived when it was born and then done the pitol and then the child passed away. So this is a really, you know, just a beautiful song and it's very lamenty. Mm. It's really sung slow and deliberate. And so, um, you know, when we're talking about that um, symbiotic relationship between human and other than human, so we're talking about the earth, earth to earth, dust to dust, as it were. Um, this is a lovely pertinent song for anything around that realm. Holy Spirit, please come help us, heal us, you know, move through us. Um, and I think it's, uh, I have difficulty singing it at, at some things <laughs> yeah. um, because I, my voice breaks and because I'm moved by it. And, and you get the wailing, you know, uh, Māori will wail and they'll burst into tears and cry. So uh, at a bedside, for instance, it's about, you know, uh, come Holy Spirit, move through us. Comfort and strengthen this person. Uh, so it's a wonderful himene, quite a stock. And you can, um, uh, I might only choose this himene. I, won't, I may not choose any other himene in a healing service because I might sing it again later and then sing it again later. And I might only do the Maori the next time I sing it. And then if there's some English uh, liturgy, then I might come in and just sing the English. And it's just moving. It's really, really moving. So uh, that was something that I wanted to share with you in terms of this liturgy, Megan, was uh, mm. and be able to share with you um, that uh, you can apply just this hymn throughout a healing service. Mm. And there are many, of course, that you can sing. But I guess it's more about, you know, how you leave them feeling yep. rather than a whole lot of words, you know, and a whole lot of liturgy. And that's the thing with our liturgies. They're full of words. Mm. Um, where sometimes the actions and, you know, a bit of music, everything happens without the words. Mm. Now, uh, um, it was funny because I, I did put this into in, into the liturgy and then I sent it off to Megan. Uh, and then I got a phone call that a 99-year-old parishioner of mine, is, um, of ours, uh, was in hospital suffering from pneumonia. So I went in the afternoon to go and see her. Uh, I was very, very happy. She'd been in for a couple of days and uh, I was very, very happy to see that she was cognitive. She was, you know... Um, and she was healing. They, were, they had got on top of her pneumonia. And then I did, I, I don't necessarily carry a book with me or anything like that. I, when they're too sick, I keep it very brief. I take out a whole lot of words mm. and pray from the heart, really, both in English. She, she's a woman that loves te reo Māori. She doesn't understand a lot of te reo Māori, but she loves to hear it. And she's always told me that right from the beginning. And because I had only just dropped this into the, the liturgy here that morning, I sang this to her. And she cried and cried and cried. And you know what? I just let her cry. I held her head and just let her cry. And there were no words exchanged. There didn't need to be any words exchanged. And then I said a prayer, both in English and Māori. And then the Lord's Prayer. And then I sang it again. 
and uh, and I can't, you know, I'll never forget that that feeling, that feeling she had, the crying, you know, just the, um, and she turned to me and she said, "I've made some mistakes in my life, Reverend," you know, ninety nine years old. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. yeah. I've made some mistakes in my life. And again, very few words. And then I sang the English. Mm. So, uh, you know, this is just recent. This is only the other. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's always the needed. After this. Yeah. And I just thought, wow, wow, how, how important is this as a healing? Yeah. yeah. As part of that healing, if it's repetitive, it's okay. It's okay to be repetitive. And take out a lot of words. <laughs> I mean, all she said was, I've made some mistakes in my life, Rera. Yep. Yes, it's as simple as that. I mean, that was that was her confession that yeah. I've made these mistakes. Great. Mm. Yeah. And so I didn't use these words necessarily, but something no. similar mm. about forgiveness. Yes, well, these uh, these ones are in italics, so it's it's just the idea is there, yeah. and then whoever's going yeah. through it works with whatever's necessary. Uh, I came across across this somewhere, and I thought actually, I I quite like that those three mm. statements um, because it brings you to another level, mm. Um, mm. and you're conscious of it, and then you 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 need to talk to whichever one ones that work for you yeah um, often, so, often, often in our liturgies we just have you know forgive others forgive ourselves and it's sort of it's not enough no i agree we need to remember that you know i may have hurt or harmed people <laughs> and i may or may not have known yeah. um, so yeah so. And, and just so simple words of hers you know yeah I've yeah. made some mistakes made some in my mistakes. life, Reverend. She's 99 years old. Yeah, wow. And she still had tears rolling down her face. Yeah. Yeah. Between her and God. Yeah. You know. Is there so something I about have... offering, that, yeah. offering that time for this to happen? Yeah. You know, I mean, it often does happen in a hospital bed, but it doesn't have to. Um, but people need that time to reflect on their lives, don't they? Yeah. So they can go forward. And I, I've also witnessed when I was coming through, you know, through um, true to ordination, for instance, and so I was accompanying, you know, some people. Uh, and even through college, we went to visit a couple of people. Um, and um, uh, I just, I, I, I felt uncomfortable, actually. Um, with the amount of um, talking that the priest was doing and the amount of just sort of, you know, uh, it, it sounded almost mechanical, I must be honest. Mm -hmm. It sounded quite mechanical and it was um, like I have this liturgy and I have to do it word for word for word for word for word for word for word. Mm -hmm. um, because um, nine times out of ten, the people aren't going to say the, the responses. No. They're lying in bed. So how do we provide a liturgy that yeah. where they don't have to respond? Right. So this liturgy is more for a group, yes, or for a, within a service. Um, that's how yes. it it's, has been used. Right. Um, it it well, was never for a one to one or at a bedside. Yes. Uh, it was more that you know after or as a service or part of a service. Um, mm. So that's just how it was set up. And I think that's how the prayer book one works really too, doesn't it? Yeah, because there's a lot of responses. Yeah, yeah. But if somebody's really sick, they're just not going to be able to do those. No, no. And because it's a liturgy other than communion, let's say, uh, they're not going to be familiar with it. And so, you know, you've got to... <laughs> You know, you have to yeah. provide a liturgy for them yeah. and they're holding a yeah. book and all that sort of stuff. It just doesn't fit no. somehow. No. Um, and certainly if, you, if you're at the bedside of, of, of Māori, they just want to hear a prayer. Right. And if, if they know it, they'll join in. Right. 
And like, you know, the lady at the hospital the other day, I mean, she, as Christ teaches us, we pray. And she, uh, you know, straight away she went into um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, <laughs> thy kingdom come. You know, that, uh, that uh, and of course I haven't used the thys and, no. and things for a long time. So I did actually struggle through some of it towards the end. And I just thought, gosh, I better make sure I can do it, you know, yeah, both ways. Yeah. Yeah, both ways. <laughs> you just always hope that somebody else knows what they're saying. <laughs> um, Heather and Jackie, have you had uh, any experiences of healing ministry that you know that you'd like to share with us? Well, healing. I'm in a local shared ministry unit which has a pastoral carer who is a hospital chaplain and licensed to anoint. So it doesn't often happen for me, but. I've just felt a little unprepared, which is why I've tuned in. Uh, but there have been a couple of times, uh, an old friend in a rest home that I anointed and actually anointed her daughter as well because I felt she needed the healing as well. Um, but I just did it off the cuff in the end. Uh, certainly didn't use everything in the prayer book. No. Because I thought it had to come more from my heart. Mm. And the old lady was so sick that uh, too many words would have not been good. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. That's an interesting um, point you make, though, about you know LSM having a a designated, let's say, designated person or mm. a designated team, maybe um, that 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 um, you know uh, serves in this pastoral. Uh, healing way um, I, I, and I wonder whether I mean is that a model that works for everybody or is uh, I'm just asking that's all you know so if if someone came to you say Jackie uh, sorry Heather um, you know said oh you know I really like you to do you know can you do it now mm. Mm. and being I mean, equipped yeah I mean all, all the ordained should be able to uh, do a healing service it's just that we're yeah. here as, of course, they have a, a licensed pastoral care person to do it. Um, mm. However, you know, I'd be expecting the ordained with the pastoral care person to mm. offer, be, be part of together in a healing service. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as church is concerned, on a good, uh, is it a good Friday? I think we've sometimes had healing at the end and we've used uh, the sacramental minister who's on for the service with a lay person um, mm. to anoint people if they come up but it's just a sort of standard little prayer and even that i found a bit wordy mm. <laughs> interesting well i mean it's not like the eucharistic prayers that are authorized that that that's all that we have to say you know this this part is open to whatever is best for the person we are with <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Well, and at we your use discretion. Ministry of healing too. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Sorry, Jackie. You use. Well, we've used the, the service in the prayer book of the ministry of healing, and I've been in the rest home several times with um, with the priest. You know, one of our priests, and we have prayers for the sick, and. Um, only once so I prayed with I prayed with someone who was actually dying, which was well um, prayed aloud with someone who was dying, but um, I was asked to do that. That was a, a friend of mine, yes, and yes, it's a wonderful ministry. Yeah. We're going to have a healing service very soon. Um, yeah. um, Jonathan Gale's coming to visit our our service, and he's going to be part of it too. Oh, mm. that's great! That's great. Um, I was going through um, the uh, liturgy, you know, that's that's in the prayer mm. books, and um, uh, the Māori prayer book, I think does go maybe one step 
further, uh, uh, but you, you might know better than me, really, in terms of the Pākehā liturgy. Um, uh, so we have a we have a prayer, for instance, more more te tūroro, which is somebody who is going to die. And everyone knows that that person's going to die, uh, and there's a specific prayer for that. Mm-hmm. And then there's the I guess um, uh, ma te tūroro, which is it's only a, uh, one letter difference between the two. Um, Ma te tūroro is actually the person has just died. So uh, um, guide me if, if if I'm if I'm not correct. But I, is is that a is there a commendation in this healing um, in these healing liturgies? No. There's extra prayers on page seven four seven and seven four eight. Yeah. People is watching the, a death, people in severe pain, people for people dying, and um, yeah, oh, people watching for death. Here we go. You're oh, yeah, people back watching at a death. Too. Okay, okay. For people dying. Mm. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. No, no, it's good. It's good. I mean, it's all in this 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 um, liturgy we had it yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and so and of course it is available in Te Reo Māori, but we haven't we haven't mm. put all of that together. We haven't no. included all of that mm. in the Te Reo text. Let's no. say. Um, and oh. that might that might be a good idea just to um, transcribe some of these ones at the end if, yeah. if they are. We we'll need to have a look. Um, mm. Just nice for people to have that choice because they can always do a bit of English and a Māori. Yeah. Um, mm in situation yeah and of course we go immediately to when a person has just died you know uh say the opening lines of course might be uh mm. moi mai moi mai mai moi mai i runga i te rangi mari hare atura i runga i te ringa o te atua o te kaifaka ora or you know so it's very much about go, 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 right. sleep, rest, oh. rest in peace, uh, go and, you know, we commend you in the hands of God, you know, so it's it's just something I guess, that even if they're not a priest, so even a komato might do it, um, and often they do, uh, and, and so that's a, a, an immediate, it's almost like a, mm, dare I say, well, it's a lament in ways, or, or almost like a fakatoki, if you like. It's like a waiata. You know, it's a lament sung. Haere, haere atura e te rangatira. And then and with that, yeah. yep. Now, some of that is in this um, here tikanga karakia book. So maybe we might take some out of that and put it in this liturgy and have a look at that next mm. week. Yeah, and, and so when, when say, for instance, when I heard the news about Bishop Jim and it was posted on yeah. Facebook, my my only response that I've ever offered on Facebook has been, haere atura, e te rangatira, haere, moi mai. That's all I've ever posted. So if you have a look at the, I think it was the Holy Trinity Cathedral post, that might have a lot mm. more mark content. Mm. You, you see the you see the um, uh, consistent language of Māori who knew him, uh, saying saying similar things, saying similar mm-hmm. things. No, and so we don't necessarily, um, yeah, it's not necessarily about we, we're talking to the person who has died rather than. You know the the family who's mourning. Mm. That comes later, but uh, you'll you'll notice on that very first day all the Maori entries. I'm pretty sure it was the Cathedral Post. Was all similar. Hade atuda. Moi mai, which is another one. Mm. Moi mai. Sleep, Sleep. rest. Yeah. Sleep, rest. Yeah. In peace. 
in the hands of God. Go. Go and be with your maker. Um, yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful. And it's, yeah, it's goose, goose bumpy stuff, I must say. I do have a tendency to get more goosebumps with Tereo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Than I do with the English. Yeah. Oh. That's, it's not disregarding the English, of course. It's just, it's just <laughs> how it makes me feel. Yeah. The way it's said. Yeah. And even the way it's said, you know, like how we have the karanga which is Heidi Mai, come, come, come. But and now it's where, you know, now it's go, go, go. And it's said the same way. Heidi Atuda, Te Ranga Tuda, Heidi, Heidi, Heidi. It's that lament. Same thing. Oh, well, our, our time's up here today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is too. I'm sorry. I didn't see the time. Why did you took me? Um, uh, when you get into it, it's sort of really interesting, isn't it? And um, It is. It right. is. And I think, you know, uh, I, I think we can put together some, you know, some good yeah. resources. And I think if, if we can just be given a little bit more time and we'll get some of those resources from Manua Te Teke, from our um, He Karakia Tikanga, uh, or he took on a karakia. Uh, there's and do a blend, you know, and yeah. and include them in the mm. English resource that you already have. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, but I do like that we acknowledge that, um, you know, sometimes we just simply use too many words. Yeah. You know, uh, and and certainly mm. I go with the flow when I'm at the bedside. Yeah. When I'm yeah. in the home. Mm. We all. Want uh, yeah, mm. and and so I see the prayer book really as a guideline because I do refer to it yeah. and I go, oh, look at that prayer, oh, yeah. wonderful, you know, and then I'll look for the Maori equivalent maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Anyway, I won't mm. keep going on. Good. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Heather's on the uh, on, on the phone. Yeah, so, yeah but uh, <laughs> thank you for for coming along, Jackie. And Heather, of course. It was lovely. It was and good Heather. to be with you both. Yeah. 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 And we'll yeah. just see what happens next week. <laughs> but hopefully we can sort of get a liturgy that we can... Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. And, and have uh, mm -hmm. recordings of some good waiata. Um, yeah, that <laughs> waiata tapu, of course. Yeah. Uh, and and, and um, Megan has suggested those other two hymns that was in that liturgy. And, and we will get around to learning those. There are some... You know, um, uh, let's say, just before we say the grace together, let me sing it first. Mete aroha o e a tua Mete fifinga tahi tanga kite Wai rua tabu Can we sing it again together? Yeah. Yeah, Mete
So when it's sung, it's Ake Ake Tonu. Oh, right. Okay. Same thing. Tonu means to carry on and on and on and on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So lovely. Ngami uh, Hinui Kia Koko. Ngami. Oh, poor Heather. Oh, Heather's coming back on. Okay. <laughs> we just finished the grace, Heather. But we could do it again. <laughs> yeah, we can. We can. Let's do it for Heather. She may already know it. Heather, you might be saying the grace. So uh, here we go. Okay. Lovely, eh? That's one version. That's the easiest version. When we <laughs> when we when we graduate and go to the two hundred level, I'll, I'll teach you the other one, which is <laughs> beautiful. By the way, it's really beautiful. But it's a little bit trickier to sing, and I'll have to play my guitar. I think it'll be better if I play the guitar. Mm. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Well, thank you.